But I wanted to talk about RSDF today because this is one of the talks I've been giving lately. And um, my friend Ben is the author of RxJS, and uh, he's sick of giving the beginner talk. So he likes to give like level 300 talks, he calls them. Um, so I get to talk about the beginner stuff, which is awesome. And I really love RxJS because there's a lot of really cool things coming, so we'll go through that in my talk. Um, let's see. All right, so first off, this is sort of uh, what it looked like for me to learn RxJS for the first time with my friend Ben. We sat down for three hours, and I wanted to cry. Um, but it was amazing after a while. Um, the things that were really difficult for me, um, I don't know if you've ever tried to look for the dots and gotten confused about am I at four or five, but that's, that's difficult. And then um, I was wondering, what do these operators even do, right? If I don't have uh, my Ben machine right next to me telling me exactly which operator to use, it's a little bit difficult to figure out which operator to use. I'm going to go ahead and not mirror my display. There we go. Let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, another thing that was... Uh, difficult is what I actually wanted to do was wrap APIs and observables so I can use them with RxJS, and I couldn't figure out exactly how to do that either. Um, once I did finally figure out how to do everything perfectly, I was sitting there for hours and thinking, why on earth isn't this working? It's because I forgot to actually subscribe, right? And it doesn't work unless you actually subscribe to something. So Ben and I went through a lot of talking about RxJS. I did a lot of fumbling around, and at some point in time, things clicked. For me, and I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. I love RxJS. This is great. So, my name's Tracy, in case you didn't know. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. I'm a speaker, Google developer expert. I love JavaScript, so I play around in Angular, Ember, React, RxJS, uh, Native Script, React Native. Co founder of this.media and this.lab. I do tech writing on this uh, modern.web and also do a podcast, modern.web and these meetups. And then I also love to mentor or help junior developers find themselves in the industry. So feel free to point people my way. We're going to go through a few things today. Um, the first things we're going to go through is how to create an observable, best practices for importing and using RxJS, how to choose operators, find documentation, how to avoid unwanted subscriptions, definitely don't want any of those, how to wrap an API, the benefits of this idea of same shapedness, which is why RxJS is so powerful, and also what's coming up for RxJS 6 and 7. So let's first talk about how to create an observable. This is basically the most basic way to do it. Um, here we're using an observable constructor, and you'll see that we're, we're creating a new observable, and then we're giving a function that gives us an observer, and then we, um, that gives us an observer when we subscribe to that observable. Observers have the methods uh, next error and complete on them, so that allows you to emit values from your observable. This is uh, where a lot of people actually get confused, the idea of creating an observable. There's plenty of different observable creation methods, but under the hood, um, they're just using the observable constructor. So it's important to understand these um, and how to use these RxJS helpers, uh, creating, create observables using these RxJS helpers, but if you ever get stuck, it's perfectly fine just to use the observable constructor. Observable from is a good method to point out since this is what you would use to convert a promise or an iterable to an observable and this is also part of the TC39 observable spec. So to demonstrate RxJS, we're going to, you know, build upon app, of course, um, and we're going to do it using Angular. And uh, using the latest versions of Angular, Angular CLI, RxJS, Angular Material, and uh, this pun app is going to give us a set of puns based on what we type. So as you can see, there's a text box input that we can type in and search right there for the type of puns that we would like. Oh, did that work? Sorry. There we go. And it also has um, speech recognition. So you can type things. And then if you click that listen button right there and say something like banana, for example, um, it'll pop up, which I will show you guys later. So let's focus first on that text box. The text box is going to automatically look up and return puns from a user's input. Okay? So to make this work, we're just going to create a simple look ahead search for our app using RxJS. And what's app happening underneath the hood is that as a person is typing, the app is going to go to an Angular service and then it's going to return a set of suggested keywords based on what that person is typing. Um, let's let's see. Okay. So the look ahead search, I don't know if you guys have seen other RxJS talks, but it's sort of like the idiomatic RxJS example. 
Um, so to create this look ahead search, first what we're going to need to do is get an observable of text changes from the user's input. So we're going to simply um, add a simple input tag to our components template here. And then we're going to go ahead and add an input event. Here we're using a subject called keyword input changes as the event handler on the input event. Now, make sure to add a template reference variable to get the text value. And uh, because we're using subject, and subject is both an observable and an observer, and observers have the method next on them, we can just use the next method to push values through our subject to get an observable of those values. So all that is great, of course, but it's not going to actually work unless you import subject from RxJS, which is what we're doing here. And we need to make sure to add the subject to our component class. So a little bit about subjects, since I'm talking about subjects. Um, subject, subjects are both observable and they're also observers. So observers have the next error and complete methods on them, and they allow us to push values call, uh, by calling subject.nextValue. And because they're also an observable, they have all the operators on them that any other observable would. So one thing you should notice is that we had to import subject from RxJS, right? Um, this is where a lot of people actually end up making a big mistake. And the reason is because uh, a lot of people do this. So they will import all of Rx from Rx.js. Um, they might think it's a good idea to make one line and import multiple types from Rx.js. Or they might think, okay, let me just import all types from Rx. <clears throat> so the problem with this is that you're actually bringing in all 60 operators from Rx.js, <coughs> bundling them up, and then shipping them to your browser. And this is obviously going to make your app a lot larger than you want it to be. And you don't want to do that. What you should actually do is only import the things that you need. So to, to do this, all you need to do is simply import directly from the module path, directly inside the RxJS package, right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to import the bare bones observable or bare bones subject and doesn't come with any operators. When you actually need to use any operator, you should just add them into your app module file and add each individual operator. Um, and then those imported operators are going to be available to you throughout your entire app. So let's get back to our pen app. We've already created this observable of text input changes called text, uh, sorry, called keyword input changes. But what we really want to do is compose this into an observable of keywords that we might be trying to type into our text box. So to do that, we've added a service called the pen service with the CLI. And what the pen service is going to do, it's going to go and make that AJAX call to get those puns. And here we're providing it to our component and injecting it through the constructor. And our pen service looks a little bit like this. So we're using Angular's HTTP service, which you can see we've injected in the constructor. And there's two methods on our pen service. We have suggest keywords and get puns. They're basically about exactly the same. So I'm just going to show you one right here, which is suggest keywords. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and do a get with that string that someone be, might be trying to type to figure out what keywords might actually match. The HTTP service is going to return observables, and then we're going to map it into the response.json so we can get an actual JavaScript object back that we can use. And in this case, it's just going to be an array of strings. So then we've added something very important. Um, we don't know how we want to handle errors, so we've simply added a catch here. And the reason is because if HTTP errors and we don't have a catch, then what we're doing is um, if we're going to use something later on like switch map or merge map later, that error is going to propagate out and kill that parent stream um, that was starting these AJAX requests, and we definitely don't want to do that. So now that we have this awesome pun service, we can basically take that observable of text input changes and go to our pen service and get a list of suggested keywords. Okay, so create a property called uh, keywords on your class, and then every time there's a text input change, we're taking those values from our subject and asynchronously getting a set of suggested keywords by calling suggested keywords on our service. The suggested keywords method is going to return an observable of suggested keywords based off of the text that's actually coming in. And then we're going to go ahead and use switch map here to change our stream of text box values into a stream of suggested keywords. Sometimes I feel like I need to draw a diagram <laughs> of this stuff. Um, you might be asking yourself, why are we using switch map? 
Well, what switch map does is it's going to convert the value to a new observable and then switch to that observable. And then it's going to go ahead and unsubscribe from any previous ones it might have made. So it's a really powerful operator. Um, if you're ever curious about what operator to use, you can simply go to the docs, reactivex.io slash rxjs, and at the very bottom here, you're going to see this choose your own operator adventure. And you, uh, you can go ahead and import your use case there, um, and the docs are going to recommend the best operator for you to use. So now that we have this awesome observable of suggested keywords, we just need to go ahead and write it out to the view. Um, and uh, because keywords is an observable of arrays, we can just use pipe async and then iterate over it using ng4. Pipe async is one of my favorite features of Angular because uh, what it allows is um, immediately when the component initializes, it's going to subscribe to that observable, and then immediately after it's removed from the view, it's going to unsubscribe, and that's really powerful. So now we have this um, observable of keywords, right? And we can basically take those keywords now and convert them into an observable of puns to get puns back. Uh, if you remember, we had two methods on our service, and the second was called get puns. So get puns is going to take that list of keywords and get a list of puns that matches those keywords via HTTP. And uh, for this, again, we're going to go ahead and use switch map. So as you can see, like, they almost look exactly the same, right? Okay, now we have puns, and we're going to do the same thing to write it out to the view as we did for, um, for keywords right over here. Um, we're using pipe async again to subscribe to the observable and then using ng4 to loop over it and writing it out to the view. But we're actually doing something a little bit wrong here. So uh, if you see over here, oh yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> if you see over here, um, we're using pipe async twice, right? And so since puns found, the bottom one, is a derivative of keywords, we're actually subscribing to the keywords observable twice. And this is bad because we're making two HTTP calls to get our keywords observable. But there's an operator for that. Isn't that amazing? So in order to avo avoid subscribing to an observable multiple times, um, you need to somehow make your observable multicast. And uh, the share operator is one of my favorite operators because it does exactly this. So it's going to go ahead and share a single subscription with many subscribers, and then you've basically solved your problem. Okay, so now you can go to the, to the pun app. Um, you can type something in, and um, what's happening under the hood here is that we're getting an observable of keywords based on the text input, and then based on that observable of keywords, it's matching and giving us an observable of puns found. Yay. Okay, and this is the benefit of same shapedness, which is why people really like RxJS, right? So we're going to keep going down this journey, um, and we're going to add another data source. So, so far what we've done is simply get an observable of keywords um, and compose that into an observable of puns. And what that means is you can basically take any other observable of keywords, which is just an observable of strings, and merge that with another observable of keywords, and then use that merge observable to get an observable of puns without really having to change much to your code. Was that like, basically like, two becomes one. Um, so, I like playing with fun APIs, so we're going to get fun and use this web speech API to get a set of keywords based on somebody talking to our app. So if you're using the web speech API, it looks a little bit like this. It varies a little bit from browser to browser, um, but what we're doing here is we are creating a new speech subject. We're adding an event listener for the result event, and then the result event is going to give us back a tree of results that the speech recognition thought it heard. And then we're calling speech.start on our app, and then that's going to start the microphone listening for us to say something. Okay, so to wrap this in an observable, it's really easy. All we do is take the same code we had on our previous slide, and we wrap it using the observable constructor that I showed you guys before. So the major difference here is that instead of handling the results um, inside the event listener, we're going to go ahead and use the observer to next out those results. And then we know that speech recognition is only going to respond once, so we can go ahead and simply call complete right after. Okay, so now, um, because observables are both lazy and cancelable, one thing that we can do is return a teardown function that calls speech.apport so that if somebody unsubscribes from our speech recognition observable or if somebody removes the component from the view, it's going to turn the microphone off. 
Let's do a little bit of uh, refactoring here to clean things up a bit. Um, since we added an event listener, we also want to make sure to remove that event listener when we tear down so we don't get anything like weird happening with memory management. Um, and altogether, this is what your Angular service for the speech service looks like. Um, it looks like a lot of code, but actually is basically exactly the same thing you looked at previously. All we did was use Angular CLI to generate an Angular service and add a listen method to it, which, re which will return our wrapped API. Um, we also added a helper to clean the speech results method and go through that tree of results and flatten it into an array of strings that it thought it heard, and we added a little bit of error handling. Okay, so now that we have speech service, we need something to trigger it, so let's just go ahead and add a simple button there. Um, we're using subject again, and we're using the subject called listen clicks um, with a next method on it, and you'll notice that we're not actually passing anything into next because we're just listening for an event to happen so that it starts the speech recognition, so this is going to be a subject of undefined or void. Um, it's basically the same thing we did for text input. Um, here we're just adding a subject of void called listen clicks to our component class. And then on our component, making sure to add it to our providers and inject it via the constructor. Um, and then every time somebody clicks that listen button, we're going and getting a speech recognition observable from the speech service. And uh, so what we're doing is we're creating a new subject here called spoken keywords and subscribing to it with switch map, which what this is going to do is, number one, it's going to start the speech recognition listening for somebody to say something. It's going to process the audio, and then it's going to emit a list of strings that it thought it heard. Okay, so before we had, uh, this is where it gets fun. So we had a property of keywords that was just the type input changes, right? That we were going out and making requests and getting back a, um, a possible suggested keywords. We're going to refactor this a little bit and take that piece out and put it in its own property called typed keywords. And then now spoken keywords and typed keywords are actually the same exact type. They're both observables of arrays of strings. And since they're both observables of arrays of strings, then we can go ahead and merge them together into one keywords property. And this is just an observable of arrays of strings, uh, which is really cool because we can just share this now. And now we're using keywords um, for our puns found observable. And it's also what we're using to find out up to our view. So a little demo of the application. Let's make sure everything's still working here. Let's see. Okay, so you can type, obviously, and see banana. Um, oh, really? Oh, you know why? Because I mirror. <laughs> Let's do this. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right, so banana, or, you know, I love angular materials, so I can do, like, hotel if I want. Um, this I love. Banana. Yay! Mexican, because I love Mexican food. Oh, it's cap, so it doesn't like it. Sorry. <laughs> Egg. Yay! And um, I don't have any bacon puns, otherwise I'd make like Brandon come up here and do that, but you can take a picture as well. <laughs> right? Um, and it's going to suggest things. So if I had a banana, it was like, give me puns, but it doesn't. So it says hair, eyebrow, human hair color, nose, chin, etc. cetera. Um, and that's using Google's um, image recognition API. So that is, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I feel like I should build something useful, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. What? Oh, yeah, what's the fun in that? I don't know. We'll see. One day. One day. I do want to build an HVAC app. I know that sounds really weird, but my boyfriend was like researching HVAC and he's like, we should start a business. I like starting businesses, whatever. <laughs> Let's see, okay, learning and using RxJS. So we talked about how to create an observable, best practices for importing and using RxJS, how to choose operators, find docs, um, avoiding unwanted subscriptions, how to wrap an API, the benefits of the same shape in this idea, right? Um, I actually did this as well using like this IoT thing. So. Um, my friend Uri loves like web Bluetooth and Angular IoT stuff. So he has like a temperature sensor and we connected that with this and just like merged that observable too and it was awesome. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about is what's next for RxJS because I'm really excited about this. Um, ben recently talked about this. I gave this talk like a few weeks ago and I was like, I'm sorry Ben, I'm talking about this before you. Um, <laughs> he's just gonna have to deal with it. All right, so let me go ahead and wait. 
Did that work? No. Let's see. Oh yeah, display. No wait. Thank you. Mirror displays. Yay! All right. So, um, T-Rex. There is a prototype version on Private Branch in RxJS called T-Rex. I named it. Thank you very much. <laughs> right now, if you minify, bundle, and gzip all the current operators in Rx, it's 30 KB. If you do the same thing with T-Rex, it's only 3 KB. How amazing is that? Woo! I love it. Um, but anyways, that's really fun. The Angular team is like hardcore pushing for it. I'm sure if the React team knew about this, they'd be like, oh my god, this is so amazing too. Um, ben works at Google now, which is why the, the Angular team's like psychotic about this right now. Um, you might wonder, how did it get so small? Well, what he did was he went and implemented a lot of operators in terms of all their operators that were not hot paths. And what that did was it turned um, certain operators into one line of code versus 40 to 50 lines of code. Um, a good example is like the reduce operator is just scan and take last, or two array is just a specialty of reduce. Um, also, the other problem right now with the current RxJS is that the, uh, they are patch operators. So currently to use RxJS, you need to do the import slash add slash operator slash operator name. And what people do is they end up writing libraries that um, will add operators to observable, and then somebody else ends up using the library not realizing that. They didn't add the operator, the library removes it, and then all the code breaks, and life is hell. Um, also with patch operators, you're basically adding them onto the prototype. And when you cease to use them, there's actually no great way to do any tree shaking to ensure you're not using the code you don't want. Um, in the upcoming versions, uh, he's basically going to start migrating people away from the patch operator. Um, so these are referred to as lettable operators or operator functions. And the way he was able to do this is um, basically use higher order functions. So he has like a higher order function that takes the same argument as a normal operator, but it returns another function, and then that function it returns, takes an observable and returns another observable, and you know, I'm sure you guys don't care that much about how it's actually implemented. Um, but what this means is you will have tree shaking, and then people who you know randomly accidentally import things, um, you know, it's still going to be only 3 KB if you accidentally do it, so it's even more awesome, right? So, um, and you're also going to be able to use functional programming to build operator chains. So, you'll still be able to, like, the syntax, if you're using RxJS right now, it's still going to be the same, but there are going to be some changes. And these are going, like, this is like RxJS 6 and 7. So, there is going to be a happy upgrade path. So, <laughs> don't worry. Um, there's a lot more to come, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, here are some resources. So, I have this repo if you want to mess around with it um, on my GitHub. Uh, ReactiveX.io, of course, the web speech API is what we use, and then we use the vision API from Google. And that is it! So, thank you.